show. And for young ladies, if you are looking for a new career or maybe considering switching fields, then welding is an especially promising industry for you. Joining us on Good Things today to tell us a little bit more is Miss Caitlin Smith. She's an instructor of structural fitting classes. We'll figure out what that is for Southwest Mississippi Community College. So, hey, Caitlin. Hello. I'm excited about this conversation because, number one, if they're looking at your photo over at Super Talk TV, I told you in your text message that you were a bad, you know what, uh, young lady for, for working with such um, heavy duty equipment. So, when did you get excited or even interested in welding? I was actually in second grade. No way! My dad wanted me to make a project. I had a project that I needed to do with magnets, and he taught me how to put everything together and magnetize stuff, so I had to weld it together to make something. So is your dad by trade a welder, or did he just have that sort of trade in his two belt of things he could do at the house and kind of stuff? He is pretty much a jack of all trades. So when was the first time that you decided to make maybe welding a career? I was in 11th grade. So did you go to, in your high school, Caitlin, did you have the opportunity to maybe dip your toes into some trade um, professions like welding where you could go ahead and get a jump start? Or did you have to wait till after you graduated to maybe get into a program to further your career? We didn't have welding at my high school, but we did have construction and engineering, and I took a little bit of both of those. And you were just hooked. You just said, this is for Caitlin. I like it. <laughs> it looks like it. I love it. making things. I was going to ask you, what about it? Is it the heat? Is it the, you know, the melting it together? Or is it the end product that drew you to the profession? The, I love the cutting torch, which is mostly what I teach. So cutting things was really cool. And then also I like the end result of what I've made out of things that nobody else could really think of making anything out of. Is there anything a cutting torch can't cut? Yeah, there's certain metals that you don't want to cut. There's galvanized stuff, you know, certain coatings on metals. You don't want to cut with a cutting torch. And then cast iron is not really good to cut with a cutting torch. Okay, well, here I am thinking this is pretty much like a superpower, Caitlin, and you could cut through anything on a whim with your cutting torch, which is that what is that what you are using in your photo that we have for you over at Super Talk TV? Yes. Okay, and so you, you actually instruct this now. So you went through, you got your degree, I assume, and you decided to go back and empower other students in the field of welding. So what about teaching it to others was interesting to you? I actually was on a student teacher internship my second year in college, and they pulled me out to teach because I was helping some of the guys that were in there, like, with certain things. So I have been teaching for three years. You go, girl. Are you Okay, so you're teaching at Southwest Mississippi Community College. So that, was that also where you were learning the trade of yes. welding? Okay, so let's talk about job opportunities. Not everybody who's listening to Good Things wants to get a cutting torch and then go teach others how to do that. They're looking for maybe, you know, alternative routes after high school or maybe that change in career. I did sort of lead with for, you know, it's a growing field for women, but this is also for everybody, right? Yes. So let's talk about some of the careers that your students get after they go through and, and learn the skill of welding. Where are they working? Majority of mine go to Ingalls. And that's one of Mississippi's largest, if not largest, employer where they build the big ships and probably yep. other government contracts we're not allowed to know about. But that's just my imagination <laughs> running wild when I think of Ingalls. So what kind of work, I mean, if you can share, I mean, what kind of things would they be doing on an everyday basis? They read blueprints, they'll do cutting torches. This is something you have to use math all the time. So you, you gotta know basic math. They cut things, they, uh, they will grind them and fit stuff. What a fitter does, they take a blueprint and they cut things out, put it together, tack it together, and then a welder comes behind them and welds it out. 
Ah, okay. So there's two pieces to that. Yes. So you teach the structural fitting part, or do you teach the welding part, or both, Caitlin? I teach a little bit of both. A little bit? I, of... I teach the fitting part, and then I teach two types of welding. Well, I'm looking on South Mississippi's Community College website, and it looks like if you're if you're listening to good things, you think, I don't have time for this. I can't go back and learn something new. You know, I'm a full-time worker. This is only a 12 to maybe 15-week um, program. Are there prerequisites for being able to apply for this program? No. You can even uh, get your GED. You don't have to have a GED for mine. You can even get your GED while you're taking my class. And then it's only $100 I see here per student. And I say that because, wow, that seems like, you know, a very inexpensive investment into a potential career that can return you way better benefits or longevity in a career than maybe where you're previously at. So what's maybe like the starting salary for some of these structural fitting, we call them technicians or structural fitters? What's the correct word for it, Caitlin? A structural fitter. A structural fitter. So if when they're being placed or finding their jobs after 12 to 15 weeks, then what can they expect to maybe start making or bringing in? Usually they'll start between 17 to 24, 25. There's certain ranks. You may be a level one or a level three, which is pretty much the highest you can be in a fitter. And then they, it depends on where they go. If they stay like closer to home where we are in Summit and Macomb, they may make a lower salary just because there's more of them around here. Right. But then there's also the opportunity for growth, it sounds like, in this in this career. And if you're a young man or young woman who's not tied down with family responsibilities and you're looking to maybe have a change of scenery or go where the job is, then I guess this is a great opportunity. Yes. So what would you say to the young women or maybe to the moms and dads listening here on Good Things that are thinking, oh, my baby girl couldn't do that, or maybe this isn't, you know, an area where, you know, girls would be welcome or safe? Is it for everybody? There are actually many people that will tell you that a woman is a better fitter and a better welder because they have a steadier hand. You heard it on Good Things, guys. <laughs> I can agree with that. There's there is nothing wrong with whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or if you're young. I mean, anybody can do it. And if you can't do it, there is something else. You got fitting, welding, helpers. I mean, there is something else that you can do in this field. So there's no reason, if you're the slight best interested in it, to not at least learn more information and take the class. Again, I go back to... And I think your your next program. Oh no, this was 2019. So sorry, it's a little bit it's a little bit behind. But it's 12 to 15 weeks, and if it's still about 100 bucks per student, that's a small investment in your in your potential you know decades long career. Yes, and I have a, my next class will actually start January 10th. Okay. Well, that's plenty of time to sort of think about it and, and get it going. When do classes, how long do classes last? If I start in January, it'll normally end about May. Good deal. Well, where can people go, Caitlin, if they want more information? They can go to the website, which is smcc.edu, and they can click at Workforce, and they can call the number that they have for Workforce. And also they can look up SMCC Workforce on Facebook, and that usually has all the training classes that we do on there. I'm also doing a women's welding class. It's like a, it's two different classes. It's $200, and they'll come out with a home decor project in December. It's two different dates. That's kind of cool. Again, very affordable to set you up with a trade that can last you a lifetime. Well, Caitlin, you keep kicking butt and taking names and showing the boys how to do it. I will. <laughs> All righty. You guys stick with this. We've got more good things for you coming up next.